I don't know if you'll believe me or not. I was praying yesterday. The Lord said there'll be a man in the meeting. And his right leg will be shorter than the other. Where's those crutches and brace? And he'll have crutches and a brace. I saw you when I prayed. Thaddeus, I saw you get rid of your crutches. And I saw you get rid of your brace. And I saw Jesus grow your leg out. And show the people how you can walk now. Yeah. 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 Live is on the air with evangelist Ted Shuttlesworth from New York City to Los Angeles, from Anchorage, Alaska to Honolulu, from British Columbia to the Maritimes, and in the great cities of the world, London, Rome, Moscow, and Manila. Brother Shuttlesworth touches millions of lives daily with his message of faith, proclaiming the saving and healing power of Jesus Christ. With over 40 years of dynamic preaching, he is bringing this life-changing gospel into your home. Join with Ted Shuttlesworth and let's believe God for your breakthrough today. and welcome to the telecast again this week. I'm Ted Shuttlesworth. You're watching Faith Alive. I tell everybody I'm, I'm more amazed than anyone how God has blessed this program. Now listen, during the telecast, you'll see a toll-free number on your screen. Whatever your greatest need is, wrap your faith around it and make the call. Joining me today is my son-in-law, John Wiley. Thanks for coming back again. Thank you for having me, sir. Amen. Brother John, I, we're getting ready not only to do uh, uh, healing crusades in convention centers, West Palm Beach is coming up, Columbia, South Carolina, but we're also going into cities with that big tent. Yes, sir. And I'm excited about it. Absolutely. How's things looking? Things are, are looking on track. We're <laughs> believing God for these thousand soul crusades and for a mighty harvest. This I summer. am too. Now we're going to take you under the tent in North Carolina and the miracle today, I mean, it'll bless you. I want you to stay tuned. 
with today's faith-building message, Confession Determines Possession. If you have your Bible, I'm reading from Matthew, the seventh chapter. We're going to answer the question with the Word of God. Why some people are not getting answers to prayer? How many would like to know the answer to that? Especially you've been praying a long time. And the answer hasn't seemed to come. Jesus said, verse 7, Everyone that asks shall receive. Everybody say, I'm going to receive. Everybody. Say, that means me. I'm going to receive an answer tonight. When we're talking about prayer, we're talking about talking with the Lord. But thank God it's a two-way street. Not only can you talk to the Lord, but the Lord will speak to you. I want to ask you a question. You that are watching, doesn't it seem like something is fundamentally amiss when you're praying and you're not getting the answer when Jesus plainly taught everyone that asks receives in that Jesus never lies if there's anything that's wrong it's something on our end and not on God's. But I believe that if we will do what the Bible says to do, we can fully expect to receive answers to prayer. I read a story today in the Old Testament. It's a woman that made a place for the prophet of God in her home. She made a chamber, put a bed in it. That speaks to the rest of faith. Put a lamp or a light in it. That speaks of the light of God or revelation. And even put a chair in there, which speaks of the fact that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 and 3. It's a seat of authority. The devil is under our feet. You wouldn't know it by the way some Christians talk. There was a lady in my dad's church years ago, and every week during testimony, she got up and say, The devil's been after me all week. <laughs> Praise his holy name. Dad said, Who are you praising, girl? But that's the mentality of some people that don't understand their authority in the Word of God. And the devil is running them to and fro, wearing out the saints, making people feel like God has forgotten them. But if you'll take a hold of this message, I'm telling you everything's going to turn around for your good. There's nothing the devil can do to you that God can't do something about it. So you better get ready to receive an answer because the devil is a liar. He is under our feet. And Jesus Christ is in us the hope of glory. Clap your hands and say amen. The prophet speaks a word over the woman about the time of life in due season. You shall bear a son. She's like a lot of Christians. Don't lie to your handmaiden prophet. Man of God's preaching a word and somebody's saying, I don't know if I believe that. But God hasn't made liars out of preachers. But I know some preachers that made liars out of themselves. The word of God works no matter who you are. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says, and about that time of life, she bore a child. And the son that was born, I love this, grows up and goes out with his dad 
to the harvest field to reap a harvest. For you in North Carolina, I see soybeans everywhere. About ready in the next month to reap a harvest. Thank God for a harvest. Can you say amen? But then, I love this, he goes out with his father to the reapers, takes a stroke, a sunstroke from the heat, sits on his father's lap, and then he dies. And they take him back. But I like these kind of women. She said, stick him in the prophet's chamber. Put him on the prophet's bed. Then go saddle me a donkey. I'm going to ride to where the man of God is. And I am not coming back until I get an answer. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm not going to quit praying until I get an answer. Say to your neighbor on the other side, I'm not going to quit praying until I get an answer. And you that are watching, God is only one prayer away. I don't care who you are. Call on the Lord, and he will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Even those things which you don't know, you may not see it, but everyone that asks shall receive. Can you say amen? She runs to the man of God. And the man of God sees her coming. He says to his servant, Gehazi, go and ask her, is it well with your husband? Is it well with thee? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. The last time she saw her husband, things weren't well with him. He was one of them religious folks. Why are you going up to the man of God? It's neither new moon nor Sabbath. You don't need to be going anywhere. But she said, even though he was troubled in his spirit, it is well. Is it well with thee? She said, it is well. But later, the prophet says, the Lord has hid it from me, but her soul is vexed or bitter within her. Why was she bitter? Because the son died. Yet she's the one who said, I don't believe God can do it. That sounds like a lot of double-minded Christians I know. They don't believe God does it. Then when he does it, the devil attacks. They get mad at God. What are you doing trying to fight God? Your arms are too short. You can't box God. Are you hearing me? His reach out, uh, it outstretches yours and mine. But even though she was vexed, she said, it is well. What about the child? Now, the Bible says the child was dead on the seat of the man of God on his bed. You know what she said for the child? It is well. It's well with my husband. It's well with me. It's well with the child. I want you to hear me tonight. Your confession determines your possession. If you want to receive an answer to prayer, you got to change the way you talk, and you got to begin to give God the glory before you see it, before you feel it, before you taste it, before you know it. You declare on the inside, I'm going to praise God. The answer is already mine. It is well. It is well. Are you hearing me? The devil says you're going to die prematurely. You declare it is well. The devil says you'll never walk again, but you declare it is well. The devil said your children are bound by drugs and going to hell, but your confession is it is well. You don't have money to pay the rent. You're broke. You got no money in your checking account, but you walk around with your hands up to the Lord and you declare it is well. It is well. It is well. Can you shout hallelujah? It's well when you're up. It's well when you're down. It's well when the enemy comes against you. It's well when everyone turns their back on you. It is well. Shout it is well. I said shout it. Woo! I 
tell you, it is well. And I don't care what the devil's trying to do. My confession is, it is well. Come on, shout hallelujah. I command sight to see in the name of Jesus. Open your eyes. I can hear. You can hear. God has opened his deaf ear. God healed his back. Whoa! I learned God uses a point of contact. It's not for the preacher. It's for the people that want to believe God for something that is supernatural. Our God is a supernatural God, and we need to get this element back in the church. Ted Shovelsworth has prepared a healing pack with two points of contact, absolutely free. You will receive a Healing Scriptures devotional and a prayer card for your health and healing. Download your free copy today at tedshovelsworth.com. Go with us into a live service where miracles are taking place. Usher, bring that dear woman in the wheelchair, please. You got to turn her around a little bit because she's going to not need that anymore. Hold my hand. I remember you, I think. Turn around and face this way. Thank you. Be nice to her. Because when she gets out of that wheelchair, she might slap you. <laughs> you remember me? Yes. Last time I saw you, you weren't in this condition. Yeah, so infection got in. Robbed you of your strength. I'm going to tell you something. I feel your faith tonight. Tell everybody your name. Joanne. And this lady was so nice to me last time I was here about, well, six years ago. And because she's not been able to exercise, she said she's dealing with the area of weight. Oh, do I ever know that? But once God healed me, you heard what I said, I got rid of 160 pounds. I'm half the man I used to be. Are they trying to get the infection out? But the Lord shows me it actually ate up into the knee area. And did it take it, did they take it out or did it get eaten up by the infection? Now, I know you believe that God speaks to me this afternoon when I was praying. The Lord told me, he said, I'm going to put a new leg and knee in somebody. <laughs> now we're going to find out. Is it this side here? You probably have a scar where they took the knee out. Where's my wife? Come here, Bonnie. I love my wife. You need to be up on the platform, beautiful lady. I forget your name and slip me. Put your hand there and feel there's no knee. Yes. Gone, isn't it? Yes. Right back here where you can get a good shot of everything. What are you going to do when God gives you a knee tonight? You going to shout? Yes. You going to praise the Lord? Yes, sir. You going to bring the preacher some fried chicken? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everybody stretch your hand. Hold this, Bob. God, she has no kneecap or bone. When I was praying today, oh, I'm not going to pray long. I feel a bone coming up under my hand. Reach down here, you'll feel a bone starting to come. You feel that? Feel that right there? Yes. What happened? I haven't even prayed and God's grown the bone back. That wasn't there before. Huh? What's happening? It's coming back. Everybody raise your hand and shout, it's coming back. Feel, Bob, you can feel the bone now, right there where there was an emptiness. Right here. Feel it? Go ahead, girl, touch it, it's your leg. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, raise your hand, God is doing the work. Ezekiel 
Ezekiel prophesying to the boneyard. Can these bones live again? Lord, thou knowest. Come on, raise your hand. God is in control. Where's uh, Sister Lewis? Come here, Sister Lewis. This is Kenny Lewis's wife, a friend of my wife and I for many years. If you'll feel, there's bone there now. You can feel it. Yes, I can. But she said they took it out. Well, it's there now. You feel it now, don't you? I wish you that are watching by television could see this. God is growing a bone in her knee. Oh, oh. Look, look. Quick, it got bigger. It's gotten bigger already. Huh? Oh, yes. God is doing it. I command no more infection to work. What the doctors took out, God is putting it back. Thank you, Sister Lewis. Thank you, Bob. Tell us your name again. Hallelujah. Right over here, Brother Lewis. Right here, Brother McCoy. Take my hand. Now look at me. When you get up, though you had no strength, now the Holy Ghost is quickening your body. You feel that new bone? That means your leg's going to bend and you'll stand on a brand new bone. You ready? In the name of Jesus, stand up. Come on, take a little walk with the preacher. Come on. She hasn't even been able to walk. She just got out of the wheelchair. She's starting to take the first steps. Wait a minute. Are you having any pain? Pain's gone? When you haven't walked, and I had an accident last year, your muscles atrophy. You got to build them back. But you're telling us there is no pain. No pain. Come on, take a little bit more walk for Christ. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. Her leg is loosening up. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior today, call the toll-free number and pray with one of our anointed partners and join these that are coming to Christ. Brother Shuttlesworth would like to give you this free copy of the booklet, There's Room at the Cross. Thank you for responding. We look forward to hearing from you now. You know, that woman, when God healed her, and she began to take her first tentative steps to get out of that wheelchair, it was a miracle. Do you know, I went back to Roxborough. Actually, you were with me. Yes, sir. And she came up and testified a year. That's right. Uh, almost a year later, still walking. Someone said, how long does healing last? I always say the same thing. How long do you want it to last? Right. I'm going to ask my son-in-law, jo Brother John, to pray for you that need Christ. You need to be set free from sin. You need to be healed. Receive this as he prays. Would you do that? Well, Father, we thank you for touching the people all across the world. That same anointing that's on this program that touched that woman in this telecast today, let that anointing get into the bodies of these individuals watching. We curse cancers. We yes. curse diabetes. We curse blood disease and sicknesses and diseases. We command them to mm. uproot and come out of the bodies of the people. Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the redeeming virtue of Christ to set our bodies free. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you that not only did Christ die to set us free from sickness and disease, but he died to set us free from sin. We ask you right now to come into the lives of those that are watching. Friend, if you need to receive Christ today, say this. Say, dear Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, mm. come into my heart. Yes. I receive you as Lord and Savior Jesus. of my life. 
Thank you for making me new in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I trust that you enjoy that today. Now, I'm holding in my hand a free offer, but this is what you call a mock-up, a cover of a, a book entitled What I've Learned About the Blessing. Absolutely free. We've created what they call a PDF, a digital download. If you'll go there to my website, tedshuttlesworth.com forward slash offer, and fill in the information, you can begin to read this immediately. One of the chapters, how God takes what you have, turns it into what you need. And I know you'll be blessed. Until next week, remember, God is very close to you. Yes. Come on, shout hallelujah. What I wanted. I command sight to see in the name of Jesus. Open your eyes. I can you can hear. God has opened his deaf ear. God healed his back. Wow! I learned God uses a point of contact. It's not for the preacher. It's for the people that want to believe God for something that is supernatural. Our God is a supernatural God, and we need to get this element back in the church. Ted Shuttlesworth has prepared a healing pack with two points of contact, absolutely free. You will receive a Healing Scriptures devotional and a prayer card for your health and healing. Download your free copy today at tedshuttlesworth.com. Thank you for tuning in to Faith Alive. We would like to hear from you. Visit us online at tedshuttlesworth.com. You can also write Ted Shuttlesworth, P.O. Box 7, Farmington, West Virginia, 26571. Or call toll-free 1-888-323-2484. That's toll-free 1-888-323-2484. Eight four.